So hi everyone, this is Jassy K from the Achievement Squad, coming at you with a collectible and miscellaneous achievement guide for a Plague Tale Requiem. So there are a grand total of 43 collectibles in the game. We have 10 chests, 21 souvenirs, 5 flowers and 7 feathers to find in total. It's worth noting with the chest that you're going to require a knife. And I recommend that if you find a knife that you hold onto them because they are single use items. Do not use them to kill enemies because otherwise you'll find yourself searching for one later. And they're not always readily available nearby. So there are a couple of achievements that we're not going to cover in the video. Those achievements are linked to upgrading all of your weapons fully and your gear. And the other achievement are linked to skills which you will naturally level up by doing things such as stealth, alchemy and violence. So without further ado let's crack on with this and we're going to go after our first achievement in chapter 1. So this achievement we're going after is called Perfect Shot and this is for hitting all of the pine cones as they are floating down the river. Hugo is going to throw those pine cones in for you, you just need to hit them as they're going along the way. So you do this literally left trigger to take out your sling and then hold down the right trigger and wait for the dot to turn yellow. Once it's yellow, release the sling and it's gonna break the pine cone. So you need to hit all of the pine cones that he throws in the water for the achievement to work. You can restart the chapter uh, or the particular section if you want to from the main menu. Chapter select is open through this game as you pre-complete each chapter. You can kind of go back and replay any segment along the way. Once you've done this, uh, the achievement will pop after the cut scene is over. There are no collectibles in chapter 1, so I will regroup with you guys back in chapter 2. my king the war is over let's keep following this river okay so we're going to go after our first souvenir out of the 21 in the game now souvenirs are not like the previous game they're not items that you specifically pick up they're things that you interact and do so eventually you're going to hit the marketplace and you'll see this fire breather just here from that fire breather you want to take a right and make your way down to the end of the market once you get down to the end of the market there is going to be a little stall where you can play a game You'll need to interact with the man at the store, and he's going to ask you to throw pots through the little bricks. Just pick them up, aim them. I don't think you have to knock all of them down, but you will bag yourself the souvenir. Unfortunately, at this point in time, I did not realize that souvenirs were going to be verbally given to you. I thought they would have been items that you picked up off the floor. So it pops ever so slightly uh, afterwards, but you can go back into the main menu and check your souvenirs afterwards. So pick up the pots, throw them at the bricks like I do on the screen, and once you've knocked down enough, eventually you will get the souvenir. You're great! That was close. You hit 
a lot. Of course I did. What did you expect? You're our best player today. And you didn't even use your sling. Okay, so we are going on for our second souvenir of the game, and this one occurs as you've entered the arena area and you are with our friend Lucas. Now, once you reach these stairs, you want to take a right and you want to go up. Do not go left because it will progress you through the story. You want to follow this around and eventually you will come across a lady lying on the floor and you will need to speak with her. Lady. <coughs> oh, <coughs> Alice, it's you. I'm... I'm not Alice. <coughs> Promise you'll take care of it yourself. <coughs> I will be at peace. You did well. I did nothing. Let's go. Can we stop it, Lucas? You mean... So up next, we're going to have our yes, first flower of the game. And you really can't miss this one. It's pretty much just shortly after meeting the lady. And you'll be near this kind of chapel behind a cracked wall. You can't miss this because Lucas will actually run over and take a look at the flower. It is on the ground just by the bucket here, hey, and you want to press Y to pick here? that up. Whoever that is flower you number go. one. Hugo will love it. I'll keep it there, like before. It suits you. Well, thank you. Okay, so next up, we are in chapter three, and we're going to go after our first souvenir for this chapter. This is just after you've been reintroduced to the workbench. You want to make your way back a little bit and backtrack up here and you're going to see this garden that is fenced off. Make your way around to the side and you want to take out your sling and you're going to use that sling to hit the padlock. That's going to break it off and open up there. the garden. Make your way into the garden and you want to inspect the grave that is just here. Now it's worth noting if you haven't I seen this storms. along the way, but every souvenir nearby will have a red ribbon that is attached to some He's kind home. of post or building or something along piece. those lines. You're right. Now we're going to Let's move on to, to our next collectible. And we are still in the same chapter, however we are in the Herbologist's Garden. And now once you're in the Herbologist's Garden, you want to take a left and make your way up to the tree by the water. Now you're going to need to look up into the tree and you're going to want to take out your sling and we're going to knock this hanging planter loose from the top and that is going to contain flower number two. Mm, I know that one. Chamomile. Oh, a nice plant. Very useful. Yes. Mother used to give us some when we had stomachache. Back when that was... So our next collectible is much later in chapter three. And you'll be picking up your slingshot again from this location. So once you've found your slingshot, you want to turn around and we're going to backtrack a little bit to the area where you would have come in through. So you want to make your way over to the ladder at the back of this area. Once you're on that ladder and you're near the top, you want to make your way to the right and then to immediately to the left. And you're going to see a bridge that is hanging up. Knock this loose with your sling, cross over, and you are going to find souvenir number four. Wait, I know this. Lucas, they have a map of Guyenne. Really? What's it doing here? I don't know. Here's the ocean, the lake. Home was... It was around here, yes. <laughs> hey, don't torture yourself with this right now. Yes. It's all in the past. Now, for our next collectible, we're going to go after a chest. Apologies, a little bit of backtracking here. Uh, but we want to make our way back to where the sling was. So come out of this way. You want to climb down the ladder that you just come back up. And then just behind where you found the sling is going to be your first chest. You're going to need to use a knife to open it up. There is one that is with the sling. Now, bear in mind, when you use a knife on a chest, it is going to break. So you cannot recover that. 
Unless you do a chapter select and come back to this later. I broke a knife, but it was worth it. Plenty of things in here. So we're now going to move over to chapter 4, and this is right at the very beginning of the game. You're going to be on your way to the dockyard. Once you reach this beach-like area, you want to take a right, and you want to follow the pathway all the way to the end, and just on the ground you are going to find flower number 3. Oh, it looks so fine. I'll take it. For Hugo. A gentian, I think. I'm sure he'll love it. I'd like to offer him so much more. He loves anything that comes now, from shortly him. after finding this flower, you're going to find yourself in an area where they barricaded the door shut from one side. You're going to be up on this kind of balcony area. Do not drop down at this stage. What you actually want to do is, from that area, is make your way opposite the trap door, which you would go down. And you're going to duck under the gap just here in the wood. Once you've ducked under and make your way to the back, you're going to find this pulley cart. You want to use Lucas and yourself to move this cart. And we want to turn it around. Well, say we want to go to the other side of the cart. And we're going to want to push it up against the wall that is directly in front of us. Once you have done that, you want to climb on top of the cart and then onto the top of the wall. And once you're at the top in the corner, you are going to find some silk which you will need to inspect. There's some abandoned cargo here. I think it's silk. Lucas, look. Real silk. It probably came from China. I've never seen so much. There's a fortune here. Someone made this on the other side of the world. Do you think it's the same in China? Do you think they have the rats too? Maybe not. Not yet. We so our next collectible for this chapter is a chest. And we're going to be in the section where you've just re-encountered the rats again uh, and you'd have lit up this tar or puddly of oil thing on the floor. And directly in front of you there is going to be this cart with a brassiere on it. You want to light that up with some fire. And once you have done that we're going to kind of go off the track a little bit with the cart as opposed to following where the game wants us to go. And we're going to push the cart to the ladder that is just over on the left hand side. Normally you would go right here but push it forward. You'll see a ladder and at the top of that ladder you are going to find your next chest. Staying here is dying anyway. So next up for our souvenir in chapter 4 is souvenir number 6. This is just coming out of the room where you first experienced tar for the first time. You want to make your way outside of the house and follow the pathway just down here. And you're going to come up to some stairs. You want to make your way down those stairs and then start making your way towards the building. But before you enter this crumbled building, you want to look to your right and you will see a door or a piece of wood that is hanging up by a hook. Knock that loose with your sling. You want to make your way out and you want to go down onto this little pier just here and you want to look up to the castle and that is going to get your next souvenir. So many people must be dying right now. But it's so silent. We never should have come. You keep thinking you have control over this. But we're merely grains of sand in the Macula's path. I'm not a grain of sand, Lucas. I'm just saying... You need to stop feeling guilty. Maybe. Come, there's a boat waiting for us. Let's get Hugo out of here. Very well. And so for our missable achievement called Mercy, you eventually reach this section where you're going to be helping out this guard. He's going to be working with you. And eventually he's going to kind of come down the stairs. So you need to knock his drawbridge loose. He's going to make his way over to the stairs just here. But you need to ready up some tar inside your sling. So the goal here is not to kill the guy, 
but to escape him and let him live. And the way we do that is we utilize tar on his torch and that is going to cause the torch to flare up in a very bright way and cause a distraction for him. And it will also allow you to pass by the rats at the same time. So once he gets close, pull out the sling. You want to aim for his torch. There will be a little bit of talking first of all. And then you're going to want to run up the stairs on the left hand side behind him and go through the door that is just there. So use tar on the sling and then run up the stairs behind him. You could blind him with the tar. I'll deliver justice myself. We don't have time for this. Run to the stairs. Come on, the boat is right there. Yes. Lord. These people. I'm done trusting any of them. Yes. So the achievement doesn't pop on my screen here because I already unlocked it, but I can reassure you that it will unlock at this point in time. Next up we are in chapter 5, this is right at the start after just dislodging the boat. You're going to be climbing up the sides of the cliff face uh, to progress along the main path, literally right at the very beginning. Now we're going to need to make sure we stick on the rightmost path as we're going through here, so over this little branch piece. And as you make your way to the back, you'll eventually come across a chest, which is next to a pretty much disintegrated barrel. Go through that little kind of barrel section just here. Well, I think it's a wagon, my bad. Keep staying to the right, and eventually you're going to come across a tree with the red ribbons in it. And as you enter this area, this is automatically going to pick up the souvenir for you. I forgot they existed. Mating season must have started already. It's like nothing has changed for them. Nature won't change its ways. The chaos we face is part of it. Somehow. Except they are courting while we are trying not to die. True. Let's go back. After you. Okay, and we're now much further on in this chapter and we have just cleared the puzzle crane area and Lucas has been regrouped with us. We're on the main path to move forward. However, before you make your way back down to the boat, you want to look up to the right-hand side of the cliff and you'll see this uh, balcony-like area. Once you've knocked free the ladder at the top with your sling, you're going to need to climb up both ladders. When you get to the top, you want to stand by the cliff edge and you want to shout down to Hugo. It's worth noting that this will not work unless Lucas is present with you. I wonder what's up there. As long as we go up, we're safe. We're pretty high up. They're still waiting for us. Let's make the best of it for now. We can try to cheer Hugo up. You think they'll hear us? Well, you can shout pretty loudly when you want to. Depends on what's trying to kill me. So, together? Yes. On one, two, three. Wait for it. Amicia! Lucas! He's seen us. Let's go. It's absurd. We should be playing for fun. Now we play to stop him falling apart. So we are still in chapter 5 and we're going to go after our next chest. This is chest number 3. You'll have just crossed over the river and caused a bit of chaos with breaking this. Uh, but this will open up the pontoon area So head out to the kind of the beachy bit But from the house that you were in you want to make your way around to the very back You'll be able to squeeze through the fence and then climb the ladder Once you're at the top of that ladder you will find the chest you're looking for directly in front of you Let's see what's inside And next up, still in the same chapter, we're going to go after our next flower, and this is incredibly missable. So you'll be by this broken bridge just here, and you'll be wanting to maneuver a cart around. However, look up into the scaffolding of the bridge. You're going to see this little drawbridge section just in here. Knock that loose with your sling. Once you've done that, you want to go around the back of the bridge. You're going to find this pulley cart. As opposed to pushing it forward, we're actually going to pull it backwards. 
and we're going to utilize that to climb up on the wood that is just on our right hand side here. So pull this back and align it up with the wood on your right. And once you've got it all lined up, you want to climb up both sections. Once you're at the top, turn right and climb up again. And we're going to cross over that little drawbridge bit that we just knocked down. Take a left and go out onto the rock outcrop. Go up to the top again. And as you walk forward on your left hand side, you are going to find flower number four. Hey, look at you stranded here. I'm sorry I'm going to need you. Anything that can cheer him up. Let's okay, this. so next up we are now in chapter 6 and we have been oh, regrouped up with our top dog, yes. Hugo. Uh, and we're going to be oh, in this field like section flowers. in particular. Eventually at some point it's going to trigger a little scene uh, where Hugo runs off towards the tree. But you don't have to particularly walk to the sense? back like I did. But Hugo, Hugo is going to make a sprint for the Do tree and he is automatically going fine. to find the first feather of the game. Yes. So when he's set at the base of the tree, Wait. press Y you to interact with him and you'll I'm get sure feather number you. one. Now, why? Because you're a little chicken. I'm not. You are. <laughs> Show me then. Three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> you're going to be a chicken! <laughs> oh, no. Don't stop bleeding again. I'm winning. <sighs> It'll pass. Ah. Oh. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. Oh, did you hurt yourself? No. Oh, look. It's a beautiful feather. So soft. So blue. It must have fallen from that nest up in the tree, see? Oh, yes. We'll look for other nests. I'm sure we'll find more feathers. Yes. In the meantime, I'll make you a bird. A night bird. Oh, that reminds me. I found some pretty flowers when I was out with Lucas. Do you want them? And now for our first souvenir of Fine. chapter number six, once you reach the tents and the pilgrimage area, you're going to be in an area which is very well decorated and there's lots of pilgrims and food and festivities going down. As you come into this area, you want to stay on the left hand side and you're going to make a break for the gap in the tents. You know when you're on the right path because that dude there will say hello to you. He's already said hello to me though. Keep following between the tents to the left and down on the very end you are going to spot a swing. Interact with that swing, Hugo's gonna push you and you're gonna bag yourself I'll your next you. souvenir. Really? You don't want to go yourself? No, I'll push you. You're tired. Here we go. <clears throat> don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I'm fine. Just close your eyes and imagine you're flying. Hmm. Can we have a swing in our next home? We'll find one with trees around it. Oh, yes. Apple trees. Hey, I've flown enough, I think. Should we go back? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. It was soothing. Can't wait to have so after a fair bit of progression first. through chapter 6, we are going to go into this apartment here. You know you're in the right building when like Amicia it. nearly you know, passes out due to right. her head situation. Once you've made your way into this room, we will need it to duck underneath some of the... Uh, shelving that is in this area so in the corner make your way over you'll want to crouch down and move all the way through and as you make it to the other side you'll see this chest you'll want to open that up with one of your throwaway yes, knives now for souvenir number two in chapter six 
This is gonna be after Hugo has learned to control the rats. You're gonna be in this room with a workbench. However, don't go through any door. You actually wanna climb up to the top of the ladder. And once you're at the top of this ladder, you will want to take a left and follow it around. You'll need to duck underneath, and you'll see the red ribbons I mentioned earlier. Duck underneath, and you'll want to then climb down the ladder on your left-hand side. And what Hugo is going to do, he's going to prompt you to replace your bandage. bandage You'll need to go over and interact with him, and this is going to get you your next souvenir. Next collectible is in chapter 7, Felons, and this is right after you've made a new friend. And you're going to be down on this beach area after scaring away some seagulls. You need to make your way across to the little hut that is just here. You want to make your way inside that hut. Once you're inside, you want to go out the window that is on the back left. Make your way up and you will find on the ground feather number 2. A seabird. A seagull? Probably. And now it's yours. Here. I love seagulls. Okay, so our next collectible is still on the beach front area, and we're gonna be on our way to meet up with Sophia. Now before you go into the dark caves ahead, you're gonna come across this shipwreck that is just on the shore front just here. Now make your way around and you want to take a left and we're going to climb up the rocks and you're going to make your way over to the shipwreck and inspect the carving or painted name that is on the side. That is souvenir number 11 out of 21. Hmm. This boat's going nowhere now. Look, its name was here. We can't read it. Yes. This hull has kissed a lot of sand and rocks on its travels. Imagine, to lose your name. Well, rename it. Can I? Sure. Why not? I think it deserves it. I name it... The Survivor. <laughs> it looks like one, yes. Well, nothing's totally dead till it's completely buried. Let it rest then. It's earned it. Okay, so just shortly after that, you'll have navigated through that cave and you'll have dropped down into this section. Hugo will proclaim that he doesn't want to get stung by the scorpion. But on your right hand side, you're going to want to make your way into this shipwreck. And at the back, on the left hand side, is going to be the next chest. What do we have here? Shortly on, after your first interaction with Sophia, you're going to reach this point when you make it to the island. You're going to have squeezed through a little gap just to get into this area. You're going to the ship, and Arno would have killed a lot of people. On the left hand side of just squeezing through that gap, you want to climb up the walls, and we're going to duck into the cave. As you come into this cave on your right hand side, you're going to find a torch. You'll want to dislodge that torch, or take it out in other words and use the fire to go down to the very end of the cave. On the wall of the cave, you are going to find some hand paintings from a long time ago. Interact with those, and that's gonna be your next souvenir. Look. what is it? Oh, that's old, very old. It's a drawing. No, handprints of the first people who lived here, even before the Romans. First people. We should keep going. Wait, just a bit. It's beautiful. It is. It makes me want to cry, but I don't know why. Just remember it. Come. Yes. 
So we are now in chapter 8 and we're going to go after souvenir number 13 and this is in the marketplace in the small little village. From here we want to make our way over to the right hand side and we're going to go through the second archway on the right and you're going to find a goat pen. You'll know when you're in the right place because Hugo is going to roll over to the fence. Once you've done that you want to go over and interact with Hugo and that is going to bag you your next souvenir. What's over there? Goats! You want to say hello? Is she nice? Of course she is. Go on. Don't be afraid. What's she called? Lucinda. You're a nice goat, Lucinda. She loves you. Really? <laughs> There. That's I love you in goat. <laughs> you all right? She screamed at me. That's called bleating. It's how they talk. She's a goat, you know. That's what they do. But it's not nice. You were scared, that's all. Let's go. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Goodbye. And then straight from that souvenir, we're going to go after our next feather. Uh, and Arno is hanging out in the goat pen. You want to turn around exactly 180 degrees from where you are and we're going to make our way across to the other side of the marketplace. We are going to go after our next feather. Your character does walk a little bit slowly through this bit, but she won't run for some reason. But literally make your way across to the other side. You're going to walk into this kind of garden-like area and take a right at the top of that garden like area you are going to find your next feather. Here some feathers. This one's dark. That'll suit you. Here. Smart as hell. So next up we are going to go for a two in one scenario. We're going to get uh, another souvenir and the perfect throw achievement at the same time. You'll eventually walk into this area where there's like archways made of flowers, but you have the option to turn left down into a smaller marketplace. As you come into this area, there's a game in the back corner and the guy is going to call you out. Let's have a look. Now the objective of the game is to throw all four pots through all four wreaths, or as they call them in this case, crowns. Um, it's a little bit clunky, I have to say, uh, but nonetheless it still works. But it's a case of just pick up the pot, hold down the left trigger, that is going to cause you to aim. Just make sure that you point it obviously at the middle of the wreath. Some of the angles can be a little bit funny. Um, so just take your time, make sure that you can see that it goes through the wreath and then obviously throw it through. You'll know if you've done it correct because Arno and Hugo will celebrate. If they don't celebrate then that means you, you've missed. So repeat that for all three crowns and you'll bag yourself the perfect throw achievement and souvenir number 14. As you can see it is a little bit on the fiddly side but hang in there and you will get it. Impressive indeed. <laughs> Astonishing work. May this be the sign of a blessing. Thank you. You're so good. Those crowns didn't stand a chance. <laughs> Let's go see the rest. So now we are going to be in chapter 9 which is actually probably one of the biggest areas in the game for exploration. So I'm going to use a single waypoint which is this bird here and this is the bird that Hugo runs over to to say hello. Now from that bird we want to take a right and we're going to make our way past the houses. We want to continue straight and go through the garden of one of the houses just over here. Keep following the path until you reach the river. Now when you get down to the riverfront, you're going to see an old olive tree and you're going to need to interact with that and that is going to get you souvenir number 15. Look at 
this beauty. It must be so old. So next up we are going to go after souvenir 16 and then shortly afterwards the next chest. So using the same bird statue as the waypoint, we want to take a left and go down the path that is just next to it this time as opposed to going to the far right. Now we want to stay on the left path at the split in the road and we're going to keep wanting to run in a straight line and keep going forward. So as you're coming through this area you want to make your way up that hill. Our goal is to find a very tall tower and you can already kind of see it in the distance just on the right hand side here. So keep following this path until you reach that tower. And when we get near to that tower we're going to need to open it up. Now I apologize here I've got a bit of a dodgy cut because I decided to go in the tower first of all before opening the door. So but make your way to the left hand side of the tower and we're going to look for the window. So as you come round to the window, you want to take out your sling and we are going to break open the lock for the door that is on the other side. Once that is open, we then need to go inside and we're going to climb up all of the ladders possible. And once you reach the top, you'll also need Sophia to be with you at the same time. Also, as you go into this section, you're going to find a knife on your left hand side, which you'll probably need for the chest in a moment. But climb all the way up to the top. Once you're at the top, you'll then need to interact with Hugo and Sophia, and you're going to do some shouting from the top of the tower, and that is going to be your next souvenir. What do you think is up there? Maybe the bird's nest. Oh, where it lays its eggs. Huh? You think it's mummy? Who knows? <sighs> Damn ladders. Oh. at the top well let's go then oh, you can see everywhere it was worth it <sighs> oh nice view come closer look oh. now you can feel like your bird when it perches high up not just any bird a bird of prey king of birds what do you see I see where I hunt and what do you hunt? Sausages! <laughs> you know what else birds of prey do? They screech. You ready? Yes! Sophia is going to screech with us, right? I was born to screech. On three. One, two, three! Screech! <laughs> <laughs> Time to head back down. Now everybody knows we're here. Nice screeching, by the way, you two. Yours was pretty good, too. I know. It's my commanding voice. <laughs> you need one to be heard over the sound of the sea. <laughs> Your crew must love it. Oh, they've never complained. Okay, and so next up, we're going to go after the chest. If you didn't already see it on the way up the ladder, it is literally just on the floor below you. So from the same point, make your way down the ladder and pop the chest open. down carefully. Farewell. What do we have here? Okay, and next up, so we're going to have progressed and we're starting to go towards Sanctuary and we've just met the Goat Herder. And we're going to be on this path here and you're going to hear a goat bleating in the distance. And that goat is in these ruins just here. So make your way around to these ruins and you're going to see some dry grass by the right hand side of the door. 
Okay, and you want to light that up with your sling. Once that has finished burning, you're going to see a small opening just in the side of the building. Press down left bumper or L1 if you're on PlayStation uh, and press Y or triangle if you're on PlayStation to send Hugo through the small hole. He is then going to open up the door that is in there. And once that door is open, you'll need to go and interact with the goat. And that is going to get you your next souvenir. There's a hole in the wall. Hmm. Hey, only you can do it. All right. My hero. Hey, he's so funny. Not all the time, but ah, quick, mostly, quick. yes. You did it. That was nightly. So, here's our fugitive. You saved her, Hugo. Want to say a proper hello? Hmm. I'll go with you. You've done the difficult part. Don't startle her and it'll be just fine. What if she screams? Screaming's not biting. Just say to yourself, it can happen. And that's all. I'll try. See? It's easy. They don't all scream. Yes. She's nice. All right. She's saved. You've overcome your fear. And I want to see that sanctuary. Let's go? Yes. Go. Your dad's waiting for you. She's not moving. She will. She's okay, so once we're done messing about with the goat, we're going to go after chest number two for chapter nine. This is the only chapter with two chests in it. It's also the last chest I found. So for the record, you can come back to any chapter and use chapter select to find anything that you've missed. So exit out of the area with the goat and you're going to progress through the main path by climbing up just the rock on the left hand side here. Once you're up, you'll want to follow the pathway up a little bit, but just keep an eye on the left hand side because this is incredibly well hidden. But you can climb this rock just here. It's just the white indicator paint thing that's on the rock is very hidden by the fact that it is also a brilliant white rock open up the chest and that is chest number seven let's see what's inside And now for our final collectible of that chapter, and this is just after you've gone in the tower where you've been using the prism to burn the grass. Uh, you have to come in here to progress forward. In this scenario, don't go out of the tower yet. You wanna go all the way to the very top. Once you reach the top of the tower, climb up, and you're gonna need to follow the pathway down to the very end, and directly underneath a bird's nest in a tree, you will find your next feather. Seems we're right on time. Hugo, look at this. Is it from the bird? It's up to you. I say it is. Then it would be honored that you wear it. Keep it for So after some big progression in this chapter, so some story progression, eventually you're gonna find yourself uh, outside of this area and we're gonna go after the old protector achievement. Now, as you come into this room, and I warn you, see a little bit of a minor spoiler warning in effect as we're going through this section. Uh, the old protector achievement is going to require us to interact with a large amount of story orientated content. So as you come into this room, Hugo is going to dart off and he's going to go to the tent here. Now, our goal here is to inspect everything within the next few rooms. The achievement does stipulate to inspect everything linked to the old protector, but that is not really the case, it seems. Um, the achievement was a little bit offset. Hey, so to kickstart this, you want to talk to Hugo first of all in the tent. And then we're going to look at some of the room things in the room that are linked to the child. So once the conversation is over, You'll want to turn around and there is a wooden toy horse on the floor that you'll want to interact with. He had a phoenix. Yes. Maybe he dreamt the same dream as you. 
Let's see what else he left us. Look, that's a lovely horse. It's your size. Pretty sure he was your age. From that toy horse, you then want to look to the right, and we're going to interact with the bed that is just here. So that was his bed. It's beautiful. This Basilius was treated like a king. Maybe he was a king. King Basilius. And to the right of the bed, and on the left of Sophia, you're going to find some toys or more toys that you'll want to interact with again people once this is done you want to go through the door that is next to Sophia they're villains I think he shot at them with this ball here <laughs> makes sense boys I like this game too come we've barely started Once you've gone through here, you want to make your way forward and you want to interact with the armor that is directly in front of you. What of it? It's a lady's armor. Oh, Aelia. This is her room, of course. She was his protector. Then to the right of that, you are going to see a thing next to the door. So you're going to see a set of spears that you'll need to interact with, or weapons in general. And then to the right of the weapons is going to be some wax carvings, which you will also need to interact with. Both are right by the door. Don't leave the room just yet. With her. He loved her. It looks like they spent a lot of time together. Just like us. This is so strange. It is. Let's You'll then need to backtrack to the by the previous door, and there is gonna be another item that you can collect here. Once you've done that, you want to exit out of this room. Toys. There's gonna be a little bit of a scene with, with Hugo, That's Sophia, uh, and Amicia She's discussing the situation. Bit. But once you get back into this kind of next room along, the surgery room, there'll be more stuff for us to inspect. Okay, so I'm going to cut that part short just to avoid major spoilers. So enter the room, which is effectively a room for alchemy and operations and all of this kind of stuff. And you're all going to agree to inspect the area. So we're going to go in a uh, kind of counterclockwise direction around the room. Uh, most of the items we need to inspect with are on the side. Just be sure that you inspect everything before you engage with Hugo. Because the moment you engage with Hugo, it will progress forward with the story a little bit. So starting on the right, I don't really know what half of these items are. But you'll want to look at these... Uh, this giant bowl oh, on the floor easy. here. Come on, give me something. There's nothing. And then from that giant bowl, you want to keep making your way around the room, and you're going to expect a jar of some form. What were they making in these things? Lord, give me something, please. From that jar, we want to take a left, and we're going to go over to this stand just here, uh, and directly in front of you. You want to press Y, and it's going to be some more sciency bottles. No. From that hey, bit just there, we want to keep making our way around, and then on the oh, left hand sorry. side, we're going to see Lucas, some more things to inspect. Hugo. And then there is one more item in this room that we need to inspect before engaging with Hugo, um, and it's in this furnace kind of yes. like thing here. Once you're done with inspecting that, you want to go over to Hugo, and that is going to open up the Whatever's next area as longer. Sophia will tell you how to get upstairs. This place is crazy. Hey, something's wrong. I'm sure they hurt him too. Hey, I know things aren't turning out the way you expected, but... Nothing ever changes, Amicia. But Aelia wouldn't let them hurt him, right? You... You 
let Vodan... No! I... I tried to stop it, but... I, I know. You tried. So, so from that bed, we want to make our way past the curtain bit just here, and there's a curtain against the wall. Pull back the curtain, and that is going to reveal a secret passageway. And we need to go up the stairs to the top floor. Do not interact with Sophia because if you do, that is going to trigger the next part of the chapter. And we don't want to do that just yet. So, stairs are on the left hand side. As you go up into this room, we want to stay on the left. We're going to inspect some scrolls that are on the shelves just here. What have you found? Okay, so once you're up in this area, you want to take a left and we're going to go into the back left hand corner. There's only one set of scrolls that we need to inspect on the shelves, but they are just over this way. Do not interact with Sophia because otherwise it will progress the story. What are those? Scrolls. Probably about Basilius. In Once you're done looking at that scroll, turn around and we're going to make our way over to the grate in the floor and we want to inspect that. Now, for some reason, uh, it requires you to inspect all items in the area, not just the old protector table. stuff. I don't know whether this is a bug or if this was done intentionally or not. Uh, I unlocked the achievement earlier on, but just to prove to you that I got it. But you have to interact with everything for this to work at this time. So our next collectible is going to be in chapter 10 and we will have progressed significantly further forward across the open area again that we started in chapter 9 uh, and we'll be on our way to this fort. So we'll eventually have come out this door and it would be on the floor, this door for particular reasons. Go down the stairs and we'll take a left and go across the garden bit. And we're going to want to stay on the left hand side. And as we come down, there is going to be a place where you can drop down to the cliff ledge below. And you want to follow that cliff ledge around for feather number five. Now it's worth noting that there's only two collectibles in the chapter. One feather and one souvenir. Sorry, there's three. There's a chest also, but there is only one souvenir compared to the standard two. So, we need to progress a little bit further through the chapter now. So that people leave it alone. And we are going to be at the point in time where Hugo is going to have caused a bit of disturbance and he would have upset Sophia. And you've just apologized to Sophia. You'll come through this gate just here. Normally you want to go through the door on the right, but we're going to go through the door on the left. Just here you're going to find this wooden stick out of the ground. And you're going to attach a crossbow to it and you want to aim that up into the top just here. And you want to pull that down by pressing Y or triangle if you're on PlayStation. That's going to open up a doorway and you're going to want to climb up. Something. And then on the right hand side you're going to find a tree once you're up in this area. And that souvenir is up at the go. base of that tree. Use this tree to chain up slaves. That's what they do. Look. <gasps> Is it? A ragdoll. There was a child here. Charming. A child slave? That's possible? It's not. Is it? I'm sorry. They took their doll away. You should put it back. They couldn't even bring it with them. But maybe they escaped. That's what's most important. Yes. Now, I wouldn't really consider another child that is toy a souvenir in that circumstance. Uh, but we're going to progress a significantly large way forward in the game. And we're going to be stuck on top of this cage surrounded by rats. 
you'll want to use your Ignifer to light up the brazier in the middle and that is going to cause Sophia to reappear on the scene and she's going to introduce you to a new mechanic which is the utilization of her prism to scare the rats away. And we're going to use that prism to get to chest number 8 which is on the other side of this area. So once she's lit up the area and she's made her way over to you, you want to drop down and stand next to her. Yes, my greatest treasure. I wasn't sure it would channel enough of that fire's light. Now come down. Yes. Thank you for coming back. And then you'll want to walk forward to the fire that is just in the area. Now we're going to need to create a bit more light, so use another ignifer to light up the torch that is just along the way. Sorry, the bonfire that is just along the way, not the torch on the left hand side. Once again, use the prism, so press left bumper and Y or L1 and triangle to make Sophia interact with the fire. That is going to open up that path and we're going to keep the prism on the line of the fire and we're going to edge our way into the steps just at the back here. You should have enough light to make it into the room. Once you're in this room go upstairs and you will find your next chest. So next up, we are going to be in the next chapter, chapter 11, the Cradle of Centuries. We're going to be after the next feather. You'll have just blown this gate open and you're going to be in the central room just here. Make your way over into the back corner. You're going to see this jar of Greek fire behind the wood. You'll want to light that up with some ignifer and it's going to cause an explosion. Crouch through the little gap just here and in the back of this area you are going to find feather number six on the Look, ground. There are birds here? Yes, cave birds. Which means we're not alone here. And he's not alone either. Exactly. Let's keep going and maybe we'll see it. If it hasn't been too scared. Yes. So next up is our next souvenir this is souvenir number 19 and we're going to be in this very large circular room with these carts and we're going to need to get across to the other side so have sophia look at the cart on the right and start up the prism and you want to use that to wander over to the cart that is on the rails just here now we're going to do some movement of this cart to get around to the collectible so start by pushing this one side and you want to push it up once you've gone as far as you can, we're going to want to push it over to the left as far as possible. We're safe as long as we have these fires. Yes. All that Greek fire makes sense now. The bridge is just beyond. But that wreck is in the way. Once you've gone as far as you can, we then want to push it up one more time. So and we're going to push it up from these rocks just here. And we're going to push it as far as we can and that's going to allow us to drop off the side just here. You might have to use the prism just for a bit more extra light coverage as you navigate through this. Just to get rid of through the rats. But we want to drop down on the left hand side of this, just this chest here. So you'll want to egg your way forward. Uh, and once you drop down on the right hand side on the bench just Wait, here, you're going to find your next souvenir. Let go. Fine. It's a map of this place. You can see the tracks and braces. Not a map, a plan. You can see the mechanisms. There are others. There. It looks like the Chateau d'Ambrage, Amicia. You're right. It's the courtyard with all the braces. And what are there those? There must be more plans. These ones have names. Denmark, Constantinople. This looks like Africa, Asia. I had no idea the order had spread so far. Because it can happen everywhere. What? A plague. Let's, let's go. So eventually you're going to reach this very hefty looking door puzzle. Uh, once you're in this room you want to turn 
right whilst you're looking at the door and you want to go under this section just here you're going to see a door with a red ribbon outside it you're going to see that it's locked now Don't to get into go. here you'll want to send hugo through the tiny little gap that is just to the next of that door he's going to crawl through and unlock it once you go inside you're going to find souvenir number 20 directly ahead of you on the table look children's clothes toys basilius they're his this doesn't look like a playroom though they took them away from him it means he's close somewhere beyond that door one hell of a door for a child not just any child so our next collectible is going to be Let's chest to number door. nine and it's in the same chapter chapter number 11. Uh, you're going to eventually reach this point where you are separated from Hugo in the room with the large bridge. This is right at the end of this section. You'll need to knock out one of the chains with your slingshot to progress forward. It's part of the main path of the story. Once the chains have stopped moving, you can press through. Instead of dropping down in front of you, you want to turn to the left and make your way down to the end. And you'll want to squeeze between the next set of chains and you're going to find your next chest. He's holding on by a thread. I hope I'm not wrong. So, chapter 12 actually has no collectibles on offer for you. So we're going to jump straight to chapter 13 and we're going to get Souvenir 21. We're going to be in this large room with Lucas and he is going to be talking with Hugo. On your right hand side you're going to see a gap in a fence where you can throw a rock through and open up the door by breaking the lock. Once you've done that, take a right and go around and open up the door you just bopped open. As you come into this area, go through the door and take a left and we want to pull this cart backwards. Come on. <laughs> Once you've pulled the cart backwards, we want to exit out and we want to take a right and then on the right hand side we'll have opened up the door. Take a left, hop over the fence and on the right hand side you're going to see another cart. You want to move this cart out of the way. You can do that by pushing or pulling. Once you've done that, go through the hole in the wall to duck through. And then on your left hand side, you're going to see the next souvenir. And this is the final souvenir of the game that you can interact with. That is all 21 souvenirs in this game. So a little bit further on, we're going to be outside and we're going to see this burning flower archway uh, and we are going to make our way forward. We'll want to take a left and we're going to grab our next feather and chest at the same time. Normally you'd be required to pull this cart to progress forward. We're going to put it into a slightly different spot compared to normal. So don't push it straight in front of you. You actually want to turn to the left. And as you turn to the left, it's going to prop it up against the wall just here. And we want to climb up on the cart and then up onto the wall on the top. Up. Up. Once you've done that on the left hand side just in front of you, you are going to find the feather just underneath this bird's nest here. That is feather number seven feather. out of seven. You can't look. I don't know what it is, but would you like to have it? Why? Because you like them. Here, take it. Yes. It will be all right. Soon. Soon. Okay, and so on for our next chest, and this is the final chest of the game, chest number 10. It is actually right next to this feather. It is on the right hand side. You just need to go through the door. Uh, I already opened it up. You might need to open it up in your game. Uh, so it's not going to be open by default, but look to your right, go through that door, and you are going to find your next chest. 
That is chest 10 out of number 10. What do you have for us? And then chapters number 14 and 15 have no collectibles in, so we will regroup in chapter 16. So chapter 16 has one flower in and it's pretty much unmissable because Lucas will find it and tell you to say look what survived here. So you'll be progressing along the main path as per normal. Lucas will already have gone over to the flower and taken a good look at it. Just where he is you want to make your way over and that is flower number 5 out of 5 or 12 out of 12 for Hugo's Herborium. That is the last collectible in the game. I have been Jurassic Game from the Achievement Squad. If you find this guide useful, drop us a like, comment, subscribe, and happy hunting.